Hello everyone, my name is Jalen and today I'm going to explain to you why immigration helps the overall standard of living, employment, and the economy in the United States. Today I have with me Bobby Magruder and we're going to get right into it. So, let's start off by explaining what economics is. Economics is the study of how humans make choices under conditions of scarcity. Now, scarcity occurs when human wants for goods and services exceed the available supply. And Gregory Manku, a professor at Harvard University, presents 10 economic principles that defines how people make decisions, how people interact based on those decisions, and how the economy as a whole operates. Now, many factors of immigration illustrates the eighth economic principle. After all, the United States is a nation bred by immigrants. Currently, foreign-born Americans account for roughly 13% of the overall population, meaning that there are about 40 million immigrants living in the United States. Immigrants come with the expectation that they will gain from the transition to a new country. Economic betterment is one of the main factors contributing to the inspiration of beginning a new life here in America. Immigrants may come to the United States expecting an initial economic loss, but the opportunity cost for moving is far less than the high perceived gains the American job sector has to offer. While the workers who immigrate to the United States benefit from the employment available, the U.S. economy also prosper from the additional employees. An increase in immigrant labor can increase job opportunities and wages for native-born workers. As a result, the low-skilled immigrant labor reduces the cost of production and increases the output of goods. This greater output increases the demand for other higher-skilled workers, according to Walla. When the cost of production decreases, the productivity increases. Now, productivity can be defined as the quantity of goods and services produced from each unit of labor input. According to Manku's eighth economic principle, and I quote, a country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce products, end quote. This statement refers to the notion that immigration can increase a country's ability to produce more products, thus increasing employees' overall standard of living. So immigrants on average raise the overall living standard of american workers by increasing wages while simultaneously lowering prices immigrants and u.s born workers generally do not compete for the same jobs but instead immigrants act as a complement to the u.s employees now what are compliments well compliments are goods that are often used together so that the consumption of one good enhances the consumption of the other for example low-skilled immigrant laborers allow U.S. born farmers and craftsmen to enhance agricultural production or to build more homes. As a result, these low-skilled immigrant employees explain employment possibilities and incomes for U.S. workers, according to Greenstone. Um, another reason why immigrants serve as a complement to U.S. born workers is due to the added supply for employees in the workforce. So business is adjusted to the immigrants by opening stores, restaurants, or production facilities. The presence of immigrants in the United States employee employment sector connects with Manku's eighth principle. When low skilled immigrants serve as complements to U.S. born workers, the cost of production decreases, allowing for an increase in the output of goods the company uh, produces. As a result, the greater output increases the demand for other high skilled workers. So, for example, suppose that for every 50 workers, a company needs one supervisor. If the company increases the number of production workers, they will need more supervisors, thus the supervisor's wages being increased. An increased number of immigrants will then raise the wages of those domestic workers who are their complements. As one can see, an increase in an employer wages increases in a country's overall standard of living because the unemployment rate is at a minimum percentage. Now, foreign-born employees in the United States affects the country's standard of living in such a beneficial way that if immigrants were to be rejected from the country, there would be devastating effects. During his campaign, President Donald Trump vowed to deport 11 million immigrants believed to be living in the country illegally. An analysis by Moody and a financial research firm explores the possible economic consequences of President Trump's plan. 
According to Moody's research, if Trump forced millions of undocumented immigrants to leave the country, many Americans would be put out of work, according to the Washington Post. To compensate, businesses would have to increase prices, leaving consumers with less to spend on other products. This would potentially reduce employment in, the, in those industries. In a scenario in which a Trump administration forced all of the country's undocumented immigrants to leave in eight years, Moody's calculated that the unemployment rate would increase to 5.7% in the first year of his presidency. So as you can see, immigrants impact the country's standard of living due to their participation in the production process. When workers are complementary, as an increase in um, immig immigrant labor can increase job opportunities and wages for native-born workers. For example, immigrant workers account for 22% of the construction workforce. Immigrants tend to pursue jobs in the construction industry that require less training and education, but also where the industry has its largest labor shortages. These jobs, you know, include like painters, drywall installers, and construction workers. The supply of immigrant labor, labor has decreased the cost and thus the number of homes produced and sold over time. With an increasing amount of homes being produced, there will be an increased demand for high-skilled construction workers, such as contractors, electricians, or plumbers. There will also be a high demand for manufactured goods, such as air conditioners and appliances. The common presumption is that skilled domestic workers are complements for immigrants. Therefore, an increase in the number of immigrants will raise the wages of domestic skilled labor while also decreasing production costs, according to Greenstone. Therefore, the country is able to produce more with the use of immigrants as complements. This statement reaffirms Mancou's eighth economic principle that, and I quote, a country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce products, end quote. President Trump's deportation can have a detrimental effect on the U.S. economy. According to the Washington Post, even if only 3.7% of the people in the country were to leave, the changes in the labor market would still be profound. Moody's calculated that prices would be 1.4% higher in five years. So as you can see, immigrants in the United States have a significant impact on the economy. An increase in immigrant labor increases wages and employment for native-born workers. As a result, the low-skilled immigrant labor reduces the cost of production and increases the output of goods. I mentioned how the greater output also increases the demand for high-skilled workers. And I mentioned how President Donald Trump's plan would negatively impact the economy if we were to deport the 11 million immigrants he claimed to deport during his campaign. As you can see, Immigrants help enhance the country's standard of living and the economy.